Hi guys, in this video we will be looking at um, question 3 MIP February um, March 2024 we'll be, we are, as we are revising for our October November 2024 If you are new to this channel, what are you waiting for? You only subscribe once, comment and like the video So we are looking at question 3 guys They said um, at 3.1 Design your own equation on distributive property and associative property and explain it to a grade 4 learners by giving solution to each. That's 8 marks. Well, guys, um, you need to understand something about distributive. Let me uh, highlight this. Ne? Firstly, as a, as a mathemati mathematic teacher or mathematic teachers, as a mathematic uh, educator or a teacher, you need to understand that distributive uh, property states that multiplying a number by a group of uh, a number together is the same as multiplying the number by each of the numbers individually and adding the results. I hope you are noting that uh, a distributive property states that multiplying a number by a group of numbers of a number together is the same as multiplying the number by each of the numbers individually and adding the results. I hope uh, you will not start. So the example for distributive property, let me show you how we work out which example you can give it uh, to a grade four learner for, 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 for him or her to understand. Well, uh, we are at 3.1. Remember I told you that uh, distributive property states that multiplying a number by a group of number together is the same as multiplying the number by each of the numbers individually and adding the results. Ne? So that's how you can uh, I would have explained to my grade four learners. Then the example that I can use for distributive property, remember, that's um, distributive pro. Distributive property. Okay. We're talking about distributive property. So the pro the, 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 the example I should I can use let's say it's three times four plus five, right? So in this case, three will multiply everything that is inside the bracket. In other words, I'm going to have three times four plus uh, three times uh, five. That's how you can uh, apply distributive property when teaching that great um, for Lenham to understand the two. No? So, what do we do? 3 times 4 will give you 12 and 3 times 5 will give you 15. We will then add 12 plus uh, 15, that will be 27. That will be uh, 27, right? So as for, let's talk about associative. Associative uh, property. I hope you will know what I'm, I'm going to, 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 to tell you here. Uh, in terms of um, associative property. Associative property, it states that the way in which numbers are grouped in addition or multiplication does not change the sum or product the way the numbers are grouped in additional multiplication does not change the sum or product i hope you understand you are noting that so the example for associative property will be let's say you, i'm having two times four um, times five i know that for me to calculate this this will be two times four which is eight that with the bracket times um this will be 2 times 4, which is 8, and 8 times 5 will result to 40. Yes, 8 times 5 is 40. So another way I can uh, write this, it's when I say 2 times, open the bracket now, it can take 4 and 5. Ne? 4 and 5. These are the examples of... Um, so what I'm going to do, four, 4 times 5 will be 20. So 2 times 20 will be 40 so that's how you can um explain the two i hope guys uh, you have written you you have 
return that um, theory that I've emphasized, right? So we can go to 3.2. For 3.2, they said, um, modeling refers to the idea that learners build and play with objects in their minds or in picture form to solve problems. Give and explain at least three benefits that you may, you may achieve in your primary mathematics class by employing a uh, modeling. Hmm. Well, for by employing model, what number one? I hope you will write this. Uh, number one, uh, it will enhance conceptual understanding. In my class, I can use a pie chart to help learners understand fraction. Number one, enhance conceptual understanding. E.g., uh, I can use a pie chart to help my learners understand a uh, fraction. They can understand which part of fraction is that. That will also be um, bene beneficial. Number three, I can uh, improve problem skills, uh, problem uh, solving skills. This will improve their problem um, problem solving skills because they will be able to re logically reason and uh, being able to think critically. So it's also beneficial. Then number three, it will increase engagement in the classroom. Number three, it will increase the, 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 the engagement in the classroom. Cl classroom that will help learners to um to 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 to, to participate and discuss their own views. So in that manner, uh, you can be able to benefit. Yes, they can be able to benefit, and uh, as well as uh, that's beneficial. Remember, it's, I told you that one, it it uh, it enhances conceptual understanding. Number two, it improves uh, problem-solving skills. Number three, it increases uh, engagement in the classroom. I hope, guys, that it was clear. That is uh, six marks. So I guess now we can go to 3.3. No? 3.3, discuss the concept problem-solving and give two examples. Right? So what is problem-solving? Uh, problem sol solving in mathematics, guys, uh, involves applying knowledge, skills uh, to find solutions to unfamiliar situations. It also encourages log logical reasoning and uh, critical thinking. Uh, I'll repeat again. Problem solving in mathematics involves applying knowledge and skills to find solutions to unfamiliar situations. And, and also, guys, I want you to remember that it encourages logical reasoning and critical thinking. So I'll show you an example that you can give to uh, you can give learners since they said uh, give two examples. Well, at three point three, guys, um, the first example, e.g., one, let's say a, a grade four learner, no? a grade four learner uh, is given. It's given, um, it's given a problem. It's given a problem where they must figure out, figure out, where they must figure out, um, uh, 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 figure out how many. Let's let's use an example of pencils. How many pencils each learner each learner get if forty pencils if forty pencils are a shared equally so this is a the first um, example that you can give uh, to a learner. The second example, guys, uh, let's say learners, a learner needs to determine how many apples are left after giving 12 apples from the total of uh, maybe, let's say, 30 apples. So that's the second example that you can give them. A learner needs to determine how many apples are left after giving away 12 apples from the total of 80 apples i hope that you are you're noting that so these are some of the examples that you can um give learners right and it will enhance their 
uh, way of solving problems they will be logical they will they, they will they, they, it will increase their logical reasoning and critical thinking so that's how you can um, answer question three and question three was more of a theory guys uh, that's why i didn't write i wanted you to to note that in your book because you should answer your the, the theory in your own way that will help you um, to score marks as well so it was 20 marks i guess now we can move to um question four question four guys um it says complete the following multiplication and division calculation involving uh, fractions so the first question uh, we are given three whole number in a in a proper fraction which is two all over nine okay divided by six all over twelve divided by six all over twelve so that's four marks let's work out this uh, 4.1 first First thing first, in terms of uh, 4.1.1, uh, I want you to understand this. Since you are given a mixed fraction, a mixed fraction, you need to change that mixed fraction into proper or improper fraction, right? So we are going to say 3 times 9, which is 27. No? So 27 plus 2, what is that? 29. Remember I said 3 times 9 is 27 plus 2, that will be 29. So in other words, you are having uh, 29 all over 9 divided by 6 all over 12 then we can simplify this fraction by saying 29 all over 9 the reciprocal of um of division remember since it will be multiplication or the inverse it will be multiplication meaning that the numerator becomes the the denominator the denominator becomes the numerator so in other words it's going to be 12 divided by 6 so what am I, am I going to do? I will simplify further by saying 29 times 12. What is that? That is 348. And what is 9 times 6? 9 times 6, that will be 54. So I'm going to punch my calculator. 348 divided by 54. What is that? That is um, 348 divided by 54. That will be 58 all over 9, right? So, do not... Okay. So, it's 348 divided by 54. That's 58 all over 9. So, that will be the, your solution. 58 all over 9. I hope, guys... Um, I hope, guys, you get it. What is happening, right? I hope you get it. So, that will save us a lot. So, okay, let's go to 4.1.2. So here we are having, at 4.1.2, we are having 7 all over 9 times 4 all over 28. So let's uh, simplify that, 3 marks as well. As for this one, guys, uh, you need to ask yourself, how many times does... Um, 7 goes to 28. In other words, uh, if we say 28 divided by 7, what do we get? It goes 4 times, right? So meaning here you're going to put 4 times. How many times does uh, 7 goes to 28? 4 times. But how many times does 28 goes to 7? It doesn't go. So you're going to put 1 here. Then after that, you're going to have 1 all over 9 times um, 4 all over 4. Then what is 1 times 4? That will be 4, then we we'll said 4 times 9. What is that? That will be 36. So in other words, we are going to have 4, 4 um, divided by 36. That will be 1 all over 9. Even if uh, you use the other way, the other method by saying 7 times 4, um, the other method will be 7 times 4, which is 28. Then you also multiply 9 times 28. You get 252 so 28 divided by 252 what do you get 1 over 9 so it still give you the same answer right so many many ways to kill a cat that's how we should work out such right let's go to 4.1.3 for 4.1.3 we are given a mixed fraction for 1 over 6 times uh, 6 2 all over 5 let's work let's work out that question that's 4 marks since we are given a mixed fraction, we need to, to, to convert these fractions into, um, 
improper or proper fraction. So we start with 4 times 6. What is that? 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1. What is that? 25. So I'm going to have 25 all over 6. Multiply. So what is 6 times 5? 6 times 5, it's 30 plus 2. That will be 32. So it's 32 all over 5. Then I ask myself, how many times does 5, 25 goes to 5? How many times does 5 goes to 25? It goes 5 times. So I can put 5 here, divided by 6. Then does 6 goes to 32? Nah. So let me leave it uh, like that. So we have 32 divided by... Um, remember, uh, how many... How many times does 25 goes into 5? It doesn't go. So you put 1 here. So let's uh, work it out. We are going to say 5 times 32. What is um, 5 times 32? That will be 160. 5 times 32, that will be 160. And 6 times 1, that will be 6. So let's um, say 160 divided by 6. That will be 80 all over 3. So even if you can use other methods, uh, as long as it leads you to this correct answer, then you are fine. Let's go to 4.1.4. At 4.1.4, we are given that 8 divided by 17, uh, divided by 8 all over 17, divided by 6. So we need to simplify this as well. So how many marks is that? That's 3 marks. Let's, um, let's work it out. So as for this, guys, um, okay, that's 4.1.4. We're going to say 8 all over 17, divided by 6. So 8 all over 17, divided by 6. Uh, remember, we have uh, the inverse of division, it's multiplication. So in other words, this will be 1 all over 6, right? So what is uh, 8 times 1? It's 8. Then what is um, 17 times 6? Let's put that. 17 times 6. That's 102. So 102. So let me divide. 8 all over 102. That will be 4 divided by 51. So that's how, guys, you would have um, work out uh, question 4. I hope um, that's very clear. So we can go to the theory parts, which is 4.2. For 4.2, guys, uh, they said define the concept and give an example in each case. No? A direct proportion. In my own understanding, guys, a direct, in a direct proportion, as one quantity increases, the other quantity increases at the same rate. In a direct proportion, as one quantity increases, the other uh, increases at the same rate for example guys uh, if one apple is five friend how many apples how many three apples will be obviously for three apples that will be uh, 15 rand i hope guys we, you did understand the direct proportion i've, I've explained the, the definition and give you an example the, i said that uh, in a direct proportion as one quantity increase the other increase at the same rate for example if one apple cost five friend how many apples will uh, how many three apples will cost obviously the cost of three apple will be 15 rand right that's a direct proportion so for indirect proportion in my own understanding guys is that in an in an, in an indirect uh, proportion as one quantity increases the other decreases as one quantity increases the other decreases so that's the definition in terms of example Let's say if four workers can complete a task in six days, uh, eight workers can complete it in three days. I hope that uh, perfectly describe um, indirect proportion. For indirect proportion, I said that in an indirect proportion, as one quantity increases, the other decreases. For example, if four workers can complete a task in six days, what about eight, work eight workers? Obviously, eight workers can complete it in three days. That's... Um, 4.2 hope guys uh, you saw how we get that 20 marks then we are at uh, our last question uh, question 5 then at question 5 
um, 5.1, they said technology versus traditional tools for teaching, for, for teaching, yes. So it's, it, it's technology versus um, traditional tools for teaching. And which method is better? Discuss the statement and support of either technology or traditional tools. Well, uh, guys, um, in my opinion, technology is one of the effective tools uh, when it comes to teaching because it makes life easy. Another thing is that uh, we can use in interactive whiteboards white to explain um, things easier. It gives feedback in an immediate way, unlike the old traditional method where we used to, the teacher now needs to write in the board using checkboards. Yes, that, that one was not that um, effective as um, as, the, as our, our new technology. Our new technology makes life easy. So that's, that's my opinion, guys. I also know that you have yours in terms of um, 5.1. Yes, as long as it's aligned with whatever they want, you will get that five marks. So now we go to 5.2. As for 5.2, mention and discuss three advantages and two advantage, uh, uh, disadvantages of using tablet as an instructional medium in the intermediate phase. So in an intermediate phase, guys, uh, the advantages is that uh, one, for tablet, guys, it's interactive learning. So it makes uh, learning fun. Using a tablet makes learning fun. That's number one. Number two, it's portable. It's easy to carry. Number uh, uh, three, uh, access to information. It's easily to access information using a tablet. Then the disadvantage is that it's, it can sometimes cause destruction if it's not handled properly. Then number two, the disadvantage, it is costly. It's, uh, yes, the tablet is very expensive, so not everyone can afford it. So that's the disadvantage in terms of uh, 5.2. I hope I've explained it well. Let's go to 5.3. So we are at 5.3. Bonzo Supermarket sell their braid rolls in, in packets of 6. The price of 6 rolls is 12 rand. Um, buy and sell market sells their braid rolls in packets of 2. The price of 2 braid is 5 rand. Which of the two, um, which of the two sells the, 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 the cheapest roll? So remember that for Bonzo, we need to know the price per, 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 per braid roll. You know? So since uh, their, 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 um, their braids is in, in, in packets of six, you know? so we need to know for each how, may, how much uh, uh, Bonzo does sell. Let's put that into practice. Guys, for Bonzo, you need to understand price, price for Bonzo, I'll, I'll say P, price per braid roll. That will be because remember uh, the price for six rolls is 12 rand so it will be 12 divided by six so i want to know each roll he will give uh, he will sell it uh, each by two rand so the price per braid roll for buy for buy in supermarkets yes or buy in supermarket let's see their price so remember they said that um the price of two bed rolls is five rand for buy in supermarket so it will be we are going to say five divided um they said um the price of uh, six rolls buy in supermarket sells their bread in packet of two so it will be five divided by two which will give you two rand fifty. So uh, buy and bread market will sell it in two rand fifty. So who's the cheapest? Which of the two sells the cheapest? Obviously, it's Bonzo. Bonzo sells this bread uh, each roll per two rand. Hence, the buy and supermarket um, sells it in two fifty. So the cheapest one will be for Bonzo. Now, uh, guys, that was five point three. Uh, point one now we can go to 5.3 point two so at uh, 5.3 point two if you have to advise um mr zulu where to buy bread what will your answer be give reason for your an for your for your answer well if i would have um 
I would advise Mr. Zulu to buy bread rolls at Bonzo Supermarket because it's cheap, it's cheaper compared to buy in supermarket. I would advise Mr. Zulu to buy bread rolls at Bonzo Supermarket as compared to um the bread of spy and supermarket because the one is two fifty and for the one for Bonzo it's two rand. That's how I would have uh, advised Mr. Zulu. Then at five point three. What would you pay for 36 braids at each roll of the two? At each, uh, what will you pay for 36 braid rolls for each at each of the two shops respectively? So let's work out that one. 5.3.3. For 5.3.3, um, let's start with Ponzo. Remember, they will, they, 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 what will they pay for 36 rolls? For Ponzo, it's 36 times 2 rand. That will be 72. For pie and supermarket, I'll say BNS and supermarkets, that will be 36 times 2 rand 50. So, what is 36 times 2 rand 50? 36 times 2 rand 50, that will be 90 rand. So, yes, that's how these shops will pay for 36 rolls. Um, that's what you will pay for 36 rolls at each of the two shops respectively if you are new to this channel what are you waiting for kindly subscribe um i wish you all the best guys in your examination tomorrow uh, study study and um relax relax guys uh, you got this and have a proper sleep today have a proper sleep and if you're new to this channel what are you waiting for uh you kindly subscribe once comment and like we love you.